Hi, my name is Daniel DeLeon, and I've been using ZBrush since uh, about 2012, I believe. And uh, this will be a brief demonstration of how to create a feathered anything, or perhaps even you could just say um, an arrayed anything in some ways, and using a nano mesh brush and uh, a feather I designed and this creature that I replicated, I sculpted. Um, based on the, uh, if anyone knows, video game The Last Guardian. I'm um, a huge fan of this uh, beautiful story and game, and so I decided to go crazy and uh, create an homage statue um, that will be a gift to the creator of the game and the composer and uh, sound designer. Um, so uh, a very elaborate gift here, a very elaborate statue, which you can see right here, standing next to me. Um, and uh, for better clarity, I'll show you the final output um, from the form uh, two and also the form three. Um, here are just some sample shots that I took of this statue uh, with uh, a nice camera and some nice lighting setups. Um, but yeah, so going from uh, a single feather and a very carefully sculpted creature and we can get this whole thing and get it to print um, so without further ado say you've done your feather or you could do this with cards or even tubes you know anything you want to array across a surface uh, mesh um, the first key would be of course to have your asset that you want to array across the mesh um, whether it be a feather or whatever. Uh, then, of course, the next thing would be to make sure that the surface you're arraying it on is not too high resolution. So you want to have a decent amount of quads, um, and I'll show you here in a minute, um, but nothing too dense, definitely not dynamesh. You know, you need to have some nice topology. Um, and again, it's all dependent to on how much thickness or thinness of, uh, you know, distribution of the objects that you want to array um, across it. Also, you have to take into consideration your computer's power and the uh, volume number of polygons that your object feather or what have you um, is so that it doesn't um, just you know become instanced which is fine but then when you turn it to real geometry later it'll just you know be millions and millions and millions of polys so um yeah so let's say you've you've made your feather in my case um i went through a painstaking process of uh using as few polys as possible to get the ridges on the feather because it actually did print with that detail on the feather uh all the all the feathers of uh trico so it's a pretty a pretty insane level of quality you can get out of the uh, form two and form threes um so with any sla printer a lot of resin printers now are getting pretty in, pretty incredible stuff but form labs has definitely been the leader um, for desktop sla so anyway once you have your feather designed you want to turn this into a nano mesh brush but first you have to turn it into a uh, insert mesh brush so first things first you want to make sure that you have your object pointing toward the camera and away from the the imaginary surface at this point right that it would be growing out of or inserting into so you face it toward the camera, you come over here, say create insert mesh brush, we say new, and then immediately say we want to create a uh, nano mesh brush. So now there we have that. And you can see here it says Zmodeler underscore one, and then you can see a little feather up there. So that indicates that we have that now as our insert mesh brush, our nano mesh brush, excuse me. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to do a uh, small sample uh, object here for you because to do a large creature would take more time of course uh and so here we have just a sphere a polysphere that i cut in half and closed holes on all right so we're just going to focus on the uh red portion of this so uh also something i found handy is to be able to um specifically uh do a checkerboarding of your mesh so that you can have more randomness and diversity to your feathers so that they're not all just going the exact same direction um, but you can actually have a little bit more randomness there that's controlled. So I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So let's say we want to checkerboard this. All right, so we got our Z modeler brush already selected. Hold space bar over your um, poly. And uh, we want to come here to uh, poly group. And then we have checker already selected. I think normally it's on something else like one group ID or whatever. But select checker and then click on excuse me sorry that is actually still the insert mesh brush so here we go z modeler brush hold space bar polygroup checker click and 
Okay. Undo history. No problem. Here we go. And now we have the checkerboard across the surface. And so now we want to switch back to our uh, insert mesh brush, hold space bar. And now we want to come up to insert nano mesh. And we want to do, I believe, polygroup all. So then that'll do it only on the green polygroup. As you can see, leaving the yellow untouched, which we can then put a different type of feather or the same feather if you like, but just have a little bit more control over different groups of them. So that way you have more diversity and a little bit more natural randomness already being assigned here. Um, but something else you want to do too, once you have this in there, is you want to make sure that your edges are aligned on your uh, mesh, your underlying mesh. And that's a little feature that... Uh, a friend of mine, Solomon Blair, who used to work for Pixelogic, he and I developed this technique, and he was uh, essential in figuring out some of these steps, uh, which I was just racking my brain over and couldn't figure out. So a huge thanks to uh, Solomon. So you want to click here in your geometry palette, and you want to come down here to where it says Align Edge. And now that makes sure that all the edges of this topology are having the same polarity, essentially. They're all facing the same directions. So now the other thing is there's, a, you know, the feathers are a little too stuck in there, right? They're a little too deep. So in order to fix that, you want to come down here to your nano mesh um, palette, and then you want to come over to uh, Z offset and just raise that, increase that a bit until you have just the tip, the shaft of the feather inserting. And that's good enough. It's, it's still a little tight, but that's fine. Uh, so now we have that in the right distribution. And so now let's say we want to have them lay down or right? we want to have the feathers align themselves to this body in a way that would be more like a bird or a griffin or whatever you'd like that nature would have it um, look more appropriate. So uh, you simply want to come here to rotation and I believe uh, X rotation. Yeah. And you can see how they just very nicely start to fold down on themselves and uh, you know we're getting a, an animal like quality to this um, there's also rotation Z rotation here so you can see how they're spinning around maybe you don't want them to do that maybe you want them to be a little bit more straight outward um, you can you can mess with the Z rotation here a bit until you're seeing uh, you know a shape that you like um, you know so you want to play with these you can even do Y if you want a little twist in there where they kind of rotate around their, their own um, pole, so to speak, their own shaft. Um, and so then once you have that, right, you've got your general layout. You can also then do, let's say, another feather. If you have another insert mesh brush you want to use, go into yellow, draw these out again. Once you're happy with that, say we're, we're okay with that, we want to do the same thing again. We want to make sure that they're touching just by the shaft of the feather and not too deep in there we go and then we also want to do uh, perhaps some rotation here and uh, see which way do we want them to go maybe we want them to lay down like this and play with the z rotation again to have them kind of fall into the same general area. Uh, but perhaps, you know, make it a little bit more random. So you have that. And then you also have extra variances here. See, so we have some variation for the Z. So now it'll start to like rustle them a little bit. And then we can also even do it on the X and the Y. And then we can switch up here to the previous set and then do the same thing there. So we add some variance. And now you're seeing subtle changes amongst different groups so that they don't all look the same. You don't have a mechanical property so much to that. And then after this, you would even want to go in there and by hand edit and touch certain ones, I believe, too, because you might have some feathers that are interpenetrating each other and uh, stuff that's not really naturally occurring in the real world or that shouldn't usually. And so those are things you might want to fix and touch up, you know, in some areas here you're getting a little too clustered, probably just because that's how the underlying topology looks. So if I turn off Nanomesh for a second, this area, stuff like this, where you have like, you know, convergence of polys a bit here in that area is a little tight, not ideal. You know, you want to probably have chunks or strips 
you know, of areas that are just your, um, your quads and, uh, you know, so then you have more control over how it's distributed. So this isn't the most idyllic, perfect example, but it is showing you the process of, of how to get this done. And uh, from here, let's say we're, we're happy with all this. Let's say we've got it where we want it, even though obviously there's stuff here that I would I would go back and change, of course. But um, for the sake of example, uh, once you say you're happy with your alignment of your objects, you want to come here and uh, say one to mesh and your inventory in the sub palette of uh, nano mesh. All right. So that made that actual geo now. So now it's not an instance anymore. It's actually geometry. And then we want to do the same thing for the next one as well. One to mesh. Boom. Now you have all your feathers that are actual geometry intersecting the underlying tissue or, you know, the uh, surface. And so let's say now we want to uh, make sure that these pieces can be printed, though, because um, right now they're still all intersecting each other, but they are not Boolean together. Right. So the next and I guess the last step here um, is to Boolean them together, but they're all still the same object right now. So that's where you use the the wonderful helpfulness of polygroups. So let me make sure I don't select the wrong stuff. And I'm selecting the uh, shafts here. All right, so there we go. All right, so oh, we gotta get that bottom part too. So invert selection, turn on wireframe so I can see that. Okay, so now we've got our feathers and we can split hidden. And that'll separate the half sphere from our feathers. And I will do for the sake of just ease, I'll group all our feathers as one polygroup. So now we have two separate sub tools and we want to Boolean them together. We turn on live Boolean. We come down here and we go to Boolean, make Boolean mesh. Let that process for a moment. It will then fuse the interpenetrating uh, shafts of the feathers to the underlying surface and we'll have a new printable mesh which is basically then the rudimentary example of how I was able to create Trico um, just with a far longer attention to detail and time uh, spent on it. Um, it was definitely worked on on and off over the course of um, a year and a half, two years um, while I was working full-time at different studios. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of work <laughs> to put it to uh, lightly uh okay and that is done now and there we are voila so now where normally if i go back to the previous one for a second if we were to go here you can see obviously they're intersecting here if i select just this area we turn on double you'll see right where the feather intersects the surface of the skin or underlying sphere you have a beautiful, clean boolean where it's creating just enough points to connect everything watertight to the surface. And now you could print this. Obviously, this is not the most beautiful, perfect example, but it gets the point across. So I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys, and hopefully you can start feathering some birds, dinosaurs, I guess birds are dinosaurs um, or any other creature, you know, you have in your uh, imagination. So, yeah, this was my tip. Uh, I hope it helps you guys out and uh, happy ZBrushing. Take care.